The 2024 Ford F-150 brings some exciting new features to the F-150 lineup. It's got new styling on the outside and on the inside. And on top of that, it's got some new packaged options like the STX that we're looking at in behind me here. This one's in the carbonized gray, and it also has the available STX black appearance package, which gives it some really solid highlights, especially if you're a fan of that like darker, the black on black look instead. The 2024 F-150 is a little bit more expensive than the 2023. In some situations and circumstances, it's interesting. I went to the Ford US configurator and looking at a 302 F-150 XLT, super crew configuration, 4x4 with 2.7 liter engine and the black appearance package, the 2023 to the 2024 was only about 100 bucks difference. But that's going to depend on how you have the truck built out because you look at something like the Lariat, you're between seven and ten thousand dollars more year over year. But here's the thing Ford's also decided to lump a lot of extra features together. So things that were available optionally are packaged in together now, and that leads to a more expensive vehicle. You look at the cost of things going up, gotta love inflation. That's going to lead to an F 150 that's a little bit more expensive. So if you don't care about the new look, the new features, whatever the case may be, you can still find a pretty good deal on 2023 models right now. And as I mentioned, Formula Ford down in the description of the video if you want to see what their current 2023 inventory is. As always, you're going to find a series of different wheel choices available inside of the F-150, anywhere from 17 inch on the low end up to 22 inch on the high end when you get into something like the King Ranch or the platinum trim levels of the vehicle. The STX black appearance package gives it these mean looking blacked out wheels. I love black wheels on cars and trucks, and I think these ones look really sharp. It's got a nice matte finish with a black Ford cap in the very middle. As always, you're going to find the F-150 available either 4x2 or 4x4. But there's a big difference now in the 2024 model, and that's that the 4x2 is no longer available across every trim level. So Ford has really simplified and pared down the offerings for the 2024 model. They've packaged a lot of other things together, which I'll touch on as we get to different areas of the vehicle. But this specific one is just the STX. So you do have the option still for the FX4 package, or you can also look at the Tremor off-road pack. And the Tremor off-road is going to give you a boatload of other off-road capable features, including different shocks and suspensions, skid plates, and a number of other things. You could technically just do the skid plates aftermarket though. So if you wanted the STX for the cheaper option for a truck, but you wanted that underbody protection, do it aftermarket. You could always upgrade the suspension yourself if you really wanted to. The front end of the F-150 did get an upgrade, but I like the STX look. That black appearance package is solid. You've got this nice glossy highlight that follows all the way throughout the top and bottom of the grill. Blacked out Ford logo in the very middle. And this really neat, it's, so it's not carbon fiber, but just the way that they've texturized it, they're kind of going for like that faux look instead. There's LED headlamps inside of this thing with fog lamps down below. And then you've got two tow hooks on top of that. Now, you are going to have LED headlamps inside of the F-150, regardless of the trim level that you look at. But when you get into some of the higher trims of the vehicle, you are looking at lamps that offer dynamic bending. So as you turn the wheel left, right, whatever the case may be, it's going to follow along with you as you go, which is pretty neat. On top of that, there's other technology that you're going to find available in some of the higher trims. So things like the forward sensing system will be available optionally, along with the front facing camera to go along with the side mounted cameras for that full 360 view. But the cameras are going to be dependent on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. And inside of the STX, you're not going to find that option whatsoever. Underneath the hood of the F-150, you're going to find most of the same engine choices that were available for the 2023 model with the same power output. So the only engine that's no longer available is the entry level 3.3 liter V6. You're really only going to find it in the XL trim level anyways, but the standard engine now for the F-150 for 2024 is going to be this 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine. Power-wise, it pushes out 325 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. But you're going to find, the, like I said, the rest of the engines that were available last year. So there's the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, the 3.5 liter Power Boost, 3.5 liter Turbo High Output, and then the 5.2 liter Supercharged, and then the 5 liter Coyote V8 is still going to be available for the 2024 model. The engine choice that you go with is going to depend on what you need to do with your truck. 
How much do you need to tow? What payload do you need? Do you care if it's naturally aspirated or turbocharged? So there's a lot of questions that you have to ask yourself when you're figuring out which engine you end up going for. But as always, it's simple under the hood here. You can easily top up your fluids, batteries there, and then checking, changing oil. A little bit more challenging from this side, but yeah. Okay, you can at least check it from the one side there. You're probably gonna have to be on a stool if you're a little bit shorter though but you wanna make sure that you're maintaining your F-150 to get the best possible life out of your vehicle. And the Ford warranty inside of this thing is the same from 2023. So your basic warranty is a three year, 36,000 mile, 60,000 kilometers with your powertrain going for five year, 60,000 mile or 100,000 kilometers. You're gonna find the 2024 F-150 as the regular cab, the super cab or the super crew. Still going to be available with either the five and a half, six and a half, or the eight foot box, just depending on which setup you've gone for. And that's the same thing for a lot of things like the rear axle ratio. You've got the 331, the 355, the 373. There are a lot of different options available. And which way you go is going to depend on what you're doing with the truck. Are you just looking for something that's a daily driver, maybe occasionally towing something, or you just want something that sits you up a little bit higher from a safety perspective? That's going to dictate how you build out this truck. But when we get to payload and towing, when I get into the back, that's really going to dictate how you build out the technical side of the truck. So things like the rear axle ratio, engine, and a few other things. Filling up fuel inside of the F-150 is just along the driver's side. It's an unlocked cover for the most part with a capless system. And I say for the most part because the power boost is going to be a locked cover and that's just got to do with depressurization. For the most part, it doesn't matter which engine choice you have. Minimum manufacturer's recommendation is just going to be regular 87 octane. So just regular gas is all you need to use inside of this thing. When you look at the 5.2 liter supercharged, you're going to want to use a premium fuel. And there's definitely arg the argument for using a higher octane fuel inside of the 3.5 liter engines, especially when you're looking at towing inside the vehicle. It's not necessary because you can get away with regular fuel, but if you're in the budget in certain circumstances, it might make sense to run a 91, but you don't need to. Rear end styling for the F-150 is great as always. You've got the black Ford logo on the back there just because this is the STX black appearance package. The reverse sensing system is there and it's standard across all trim levels of the vehicle now. You're also gonna have the backup camera. Towing inside of the F-150, as always, is all over the place. So the amount that you can tow is going to depend on the engine that you've got. If you're in the regular cab, the super cab, or the super crew, all over the place. So your minimum towing is going to be 7,400 pounds inside of the super cab. But when you get into the super crew, you're maxing out at 13,500 pounds. But again, it's going to depend on how you have the vehicle configured. So I have actually put together a video that explains the different configuration options and towing charts and things like that. You'll find a link down in the description of this video. But along the back here, there is the seven and the four pin wiring provisions. And then as always, the spare tire for the F-150 is located just underneath. And then the jack is just behind the second row seat along the passenger side. So you could change it yourself. But one of the benefits of being a Ford owner is that you also have access to Ford roadside assistance. And that's good for the same length as the powertrain warranty. So a five year, 60,000 mile, 100,000 kilometers. You call an 800 number, they can help you out with changing a tire, towing services, winching, if you run out of fuel, battery jump starts, and a few other things. Some versions of the F-150 do have a power release for the tailgate, but if yours isn't, doing it yourself isn't hard, and it can be fun at the same time. All you're gonna do is grip, look, and drop. Way easier with that power release, but this one is completely naked. You do have the option for either the drop-in or the spray-in bed liner from the factory, or you can do it aftermarket. I personally prefer the spray-in bed liner aftermarket through Linex. It's about twice as thick as the factory liner with the lifetime warranty. But which way you go is going to depend on what you're doing, because if you've got gravel that you're sweeping out, the plastic liners, infinitely easier to use in comparison, in my opinion. But I mean, as always, you've got so many things that you can do with this. There are a ton of accessories you could look at. You've got the loading ramps that are available, bed extenders. You can cap this thing out. There's trifold, soft rolling, tunnel covers. There are so many different things that you can do with the bed of this truck. There is a new package inside of the 2024 model called the bed utility package. And what you get inside of it is going to depend on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. Because like I said, this one is completely stripped down, but it would give you the work surface area in the back. 
the tailgate step and a few other things. Again, depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you've got. You're always gonna find on the left and the right hand side, some bottle openers. And then along the back here, there's also some cubbies if you want on both the driver and the passenger side. So tiny little bit of storage on both sides. And payload is a completely different story. So the payload inside of the truck is going to depend on which, again, build that you've got. How do you have this thing spec'd out? Because when you look at payload numbers inside of the F-150, the payload is going to range. The regular cab is going to be 1,610 pounds up to 2,445 pounds. The super cab is 1,605 pounds up to 2,200 pounds. And then the super crew, like what we're looking at here, is 1,410 pounds up to 2,230 pounds. But again, that's going to depend on how you have the vehicle configured. What box size do you have? What rear axle ratio do you have? What engine do you have? And then you have to look at all the accessories too. You want a sunroof? That has a net weight, which means your payload won't be as high. You want accessories like the loading ramps, if you want a tunnel cover or a bed liner. They all have a net weight, which is negatively going to impact your overall payload. So you definitely want to watch the video that I put out that goes over some different payload options and scenarios. But if you're looking at an F-150 that's already on a dealership lot and you're not sure what the payload is, you can easily find it just by going to the driver's side door and then hopping inside, there's a little yellow payload sticker. So this one, the max number is 1,581 pounds. So it's a little bit of a discrepancy based off of the actual maximum payload that you're allowed inside of the truck. So that's something that you have to consider. And if you're really nickel and diming the payload capacity or the towing capacity of the F-150, you might have to look at a Super Duty, like a 250 or a 350 instead. But like I said, you've got a ton of different options that are available inside of this thing. Some versions of the F-150 are going to have the running board included. Other ones, it's going to be available optionally. Some of them might be extended back a little bit. There's also the option for the power folding ones as well, depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in. Inside of the STX, the mirrors are nice and simple, power adjustable, and they feature the blind spot monitoring system. The security code keyless entry is available as an aftermarket accessory from the factory and some trims. On the inside, Ooh, first I got to point out the STX bucket seat, I think looks great. I love that stitching. Really solid look there. It's just unique, bright, like it. Along the door there, it's unchanged. You've got your basic unlock lock buttons. As always, you're also going to have the option for memory buttons there. And that's going to be for the higher trims for memory for your side view mirror, the steering wheel and the driver's seat. Your basic window controls and side mirror controls with some storage along the side. You've got this nice glossy highlight along the outside there with metallic finished paint. It's always the option of turning on your bed lighting, figure out what's going on with your running lamps, and then increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen. There's an electronic parking brake, and then your hood release. As always, some versions of the F-150 are going to have either manual, and some of them will have power adjustable seats. Inside of the STX, you're strictly looking at a manual, but for this one, you can adjust the backrest. You can also, adjust the lumbar support and then you can slide the seat forwards or backwards so you don't have the option of moving the seat up or down inside of the stx trim level i guess that's the same way for the pedals so the pedals inside of this thing are locked in place but you do have the option for power adjustable pedals in some trim levels of the vehicle but ugh, hop it inside that love it got a point i love that blacked out blowful instead so rather i like the ford blue but that black look, I think it looks sharp. And let's start this bad boy up. Some versions of the F-150 for 24 still have the old flip style key instead. Good from a safety perspective. And you can use the key if you wanted to be able to lock the armrest or the glove box as well. But let's start this thing up. Oh God, start up. Love it. A few really cool things is that the digital cluster screen here is now standard across every trim level of the vehicle. So there's no analog option whatsoever. And then the infotainment system, that 12 inch, is now standard across the entire vehicle lineup as well. When I first started reviewing cars and trucks and I saw the digital, I wasn't really in love with it. But the more that I see it, the more I use it. The digital setup is great. The obvious downside is that if something happens to the digital screen, you are pretty much SOL for driving and speed and things like that. But you could always hook up your phone through the OBD2 port. So you get a, like a Blue Link driver 
for the OBD2, hook it up to your phone, and you can use that temporarily until it's fixed. So there are options and workarounds. It's not ideal, but it is there. But the steering wheel here is simple. You've also got a series of options, so your basic cruise control with the option for the adaptive cruise and the higher trims. You've also got your volume button, and then you can, you've got your voice command prompt, and then the option of moving through the little cluster screen there. But if you want a full walkthrough, like how to use the actual cluster screen, move through it, use the infotainment, you'll find those walkthroughs down in the description of this video. The shifter inside of this thing is interesting. So I like it, like it's old school for this one with a manual mode as well. So when you're in that drive mode, you can push the button on the tip there in order to go into your manual mode, and then you can go up and down to adjust gears that way. But one thing to note, one thing to note is that you might also have the shifter here. So what you saw in the 2023 model, that's going to depend on which version of the vehicle that you're in. And that's even the same with the seat setup here. So inside of the super crew version, I guess, well, technically even the super cab version of the truck. And I mean, even technically in the regular cab, it's going to be with a bench seat setup instead. So you've got your 40, 20, 40 seat. So you'd have the option for up to six people, but certain versions and certain packages are going to give you this console setup instead. I prefer the console because there's a boatload of space inside of this thing. That is ridiculous, but a great amount of storage space. But I mean, obviously, if you need a seat, you just have to make sure that you adjust your build appropriately based off of your needs. But it's the same thing for the key. So the key for the most part is going to be push button start, but the lower trims are still going to be just your regular key fob instead. It's good. Integrated brake controller here is available optionally in some trims, standard in others. And then you've got, because this is the four x four, your four high, four low, and then you'd have four auto and some other trim levels of the vehicle as well. You've also got a drive mode button here, well, selector switch, I should say. And as always, you've got a series of options like tow haul mode, eco mode, and sport mode. It's just going to play with your traction stability control. And then, the, well, this mode specifically, so sport mode, is going to hold on to your RPMs a little bit longer. So as you start to drive, as the RPMs shoot up, it's going to hold on to them a little bit more to give you a little bit more launch. And then if you go the opposite way, one of them that I like, I love the look of, is the off-road mode. Look at this. So it's shifting automatically into 4x4 four four instead, so 4 high. But look at that. Damn, that looks good. And then you can also customize this thing a little bit. So do you want the compass showing, off-road status, or do you want your pitch and roll showing? I mean, that is extremely, extremely useful. Where you can see there are certain modes, so it turned off the traction control and shift you, shifted you into 4 high automatically. So the mode that you're in is going to dictate what the vehicle decides to do with itself overall. Yes, I see. Right back into 2 high automatically. And then from there, you've also got a series of buttons there. So the auto start stop system is still there, but what it's going to do is you turn the vehicle off. You have to turn it back on again. You do also have the option for a 360 camera. That's just your regular backup cam. Your 360 view is available in the higher trims, four way blinkers with traction control. One amazing thing, this is a base level truck, but it does have factory navigation built in with the factory nav going full screen. But there's one downside right now. The feature requires activation, and that's going to be the same way for the entire F-150 lineup. So inside of this thing, it's now connected navigation. So what that means is you get one year of connected navigation with the vehicle. So essentially what that means is you can actually use it as a regular GPS for a year after the year is up. If you don't renew the services, it essentially reverts to a dead moving map. So you wouldn't be able to enter the destination or endpoint. It would just follow you around as you drive. So you do have the option through the Ford Pass app on your cell phone to be able to set yourself up for the navigation option if you wanted to continue on with that afterwards. But through the screen, you can also hook up your phone, so either Android phones or iPhones, wirelessly to use Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze right through the screen. But as I mentioned, if you want to walk through on how the screen actually works, you'll find it down in the description of this video. But there are so many things. This thing has a ton of different safety driver assistant settings, parking aid sensors, and things like that zone lighting for the outside of the vehicle, and then your digital owner's manual that's built right in. You've got your volume rocker, tuning rocker, and some other buttons there with your single zone climate control. The option for dual is there in the higher trims, and that's the same way with a few other things. So there would be the option for a wireless charge pad in some of the higher trim levels of the vehicle as well. And then you can see there, there are also a few USB power points. So media inside of this thing is also a cool one. So you've got the option as always for audio. You can go sources. So AM, FM, Sirius XM. If you wanted to hook your phone over Bluetooth, just for audio, you could do that. 
And then if you wanted to hook yourself up over USB, oop, one of the two ways, and I guarantee I'm going to get it wrong both times. There we go. So USB is detected, and I'm going to go find a song. But before I do, the 2024 F-150 has a boatload of different speaker choices that are available. Inside of the regular cab, your default is going to be four speakers. Inside of the Super Cab and the Super Crew, it's six speakers. And then you've also got the option for either an eight speaker or a 14 speaker sound system as well. And that's going to depend on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. But the audio system inside of this thing, the six speaker, it's not bad. It's not obviously as good as the higher Bang & Olufsen systems are going to be, like the eight speaker or the 14 speaker. But still, it's pretty solid at the same time. So coming right into the microphone, no post-processing done whatsoever. I mean, that is pumping audio inside of this thing nicely. Is it as clean as the 8 speaker or the 14 speaker? No, but still, it's pretty solid all at the same time. So if audio is your thing, you're probably going to want to look at one of the higher options, but you could also do something aftermarket yourself if you wanted to. But like I said, audio inside of this thing is great. You've got a few cup holders there. I did mention shifter wise, you'd have the option of either having it traditional old school here or the regular shifter here instead. And then I did mention the manual mode and the manual mode is very useful for a few situations, but I put a walkthrough video together on the Mustang paddle shifters, but the same rules and principles apply if you're using the shifter here or the shifter here with the manual mode. So you can find a walkthrough down in the description of this video. Did mention, so the armrest here, it is lockable with a great amount of space. You've got the F-150 badge with a little storage cubby. Typically, that would be something that would be a release, but the lower trims don't have that option. 12 volt power point there, along with a few more USB Type-C power points as well. The dash visibility is great. Pillar visibility, a little bit tricky to see there, which is where the blind spot monitoring system would come into play. Inside of this thing, it's either gonna be a manual or an auto dimming rear view. And that's giving the same for a few things. So I guess technically this one doesn't even have the power sliding rear window, but that is available. So these pieces of tech are optional in some of the higher, well, standard, I guess, in some of the higher trims. From there, you've got your basic controls for your cabin lights, little sunglasses holder. And then this thing doesn't have the sunroof, but it is available. So that full panoramic roof, like what you were looking at in last year's model. Overhead, nothing on the outside and nothing on the inside here except for a little ticket receipt holder. But one interesting thing is that if you shoot across to the passenger side, there's a mirror there. I think it should be on the driver's side, but at least you've got a single mirror there. You can always check yourself out in the rear view if you needed to. And then this thing extends out, blocking all of the sun. That could be in your face. Now, there is one other package that's now going to be available inside of the F-150. So you did have the work surface area that was its own standalone option last year. But for this year, there's a new office package instead. And that office package is going to give you a few things, specifically the work surface area, and then a few different power points. And then you get other features like the partition lockable storage in some of the higher trim levels of the vehicle. So it's not available as its own standalone option, standalone option anymore for the work surface area but it is available there if you want it. And that's in some of the higher trims of the vehicle where it'll come standard and then it's available optionally in some of the other trim levels of the vehicle. But overall, like this is nice. I love that Ford's now including the fully digital cluster screen inside of the 2024 model. I do like that this screen is now standard. I don't like how you can't get the built-in navigation anymore though, and that it's only connected. But like I said, you can hook up your iPhone or Android to go wirelessly through CarPlay or Android Auto instead to get Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze. But this is good. So I am currently set up, actually. Yeah, so this seat can't be moved at all, with the exception of sliding forwards and backwards. But oh, let's go back a bit. This is the way that I would traditionally drive the vehicle. And with the seat set up this way, inside of the second row, I've got a great amount of knee space, great amount of foot space as well. Like, that's... That's amazing. And then up overhead with me sitting fully upright, the back of my head with me sitting all the way back, about an inch, inch and a half of head space. But if I move forward and I'm not leaning back, I've got about four inches of space there. So taller, bigger people, you'll be able to sit inside of the second row of this thing. And this is the super crew configuration, which is why there's so much space back here. 
but you've got the option for the super cab, which means that you're going to lose a little bit of leg space. And then the regular cab, which means you're not going to have a second row anyway, so it doesn't even matter. But there's, it's plenty spacious back here. And the, even in the middle row, the middle seat, I should say, tons of space, like flat floor, which is great. And then you do have the option for the thermoplastic rubber trays for the floor right from the factory, or you can do aftermarket through WeatherTech, and there are a few other companies too. But door style there is nice and simple. There are pockets behind both the driver and the passenger side. You've got your cup holders there. Down below, there's a 12 volt power point. And then there's also two USB type power points down there as well. So USB type C. From there, passenger, or yeah, passenger side, you've got a little hook and a light. And that's the same along the driver's side. So hook and a light there as well. But outside of that, there's not a ton of stuff inside of the STX second row. You would have the option for heated second row seats and some of the higher trims when you packaged it out properly. But regardless of the trim, there are still no options for second row ventilated seats whatsoever. That would be kind of a nice feature to see though. But outside of that, let's see, let's show you a few things behind the seat. Ugh. So if you look at the seat, so I guess first thing, if you've got kids seats, the anchor points are there and then the top tether strap is there on top of that. And that's for all three seats. Lifting the seat up can just be done like this. You can just pop it up. But once it's up, it's actually locked into place. You've got to pull the tab here in order to be able to drop the seat down. As always inside of this thing, you do have the option for the partition lockable storage. There's the, also the just regular storage option underneath as well. But the partition lockable is great. But if you want to know how the partition lockable storage works, you'll find a walkthrough down in the description of this video. There's one thing along the passenger side that I need to show you as well. So, along the passenger side seat, same idea, you can just lift it up simply. You would have the inverter here in some versions of the vehicle. Pull in order to drop down. And then along the outside of the seat there. So you've also got the option of pulling this tab in order to fold forward to get access to the jack and the white spigot. So if you ever need to fill up using a jerry can, you're going to insert that first and then fill up using the jerry can by pushing the jerry can thing right in there instead. Obviously like not there, but if it was inside of the gas compartment of the vehicle there instead, but straightforward, nice and simple. I mean, that is plenty spacious. And that's one thing that I like about the super crew truck is how much space is actually inside of this thing. If you don't need the space, the super cab is an option just in case you might need it. Or you can just go old school with the regular cab instead and get that big box. Cause some people need that bigger box instead, but this thing has just the regular 2.7 liter engine. So let's go for a spin and have a little bit of fun. The seats inside of it are nice and comfortable, which is great. It's good. Now, don't get me wrong. It's no Lariat or 402A package Tremor, but still they're pretty good seats at the same time, but they do have limitations inside of the STX. So a few things that you're not going to find, there's no heated first row seats inside of this package but there is the option for heated and ventilated first row seats in some of the other trim levels of the vehicle. So if you wanted those heated ventilated, your Lariat 502A high pack, the Tremor 402A high pack, and then King Ranch Platinum, they're standard now as well. But seat's good. It's comfy. The one thing that I don't like about the STX seat though, is that you don't have the option of sliding the, or moving the seat up and down. So you can slide it forwards, backwards, and adjust the backrest but you can't lift it up or down. So it's essentially locked into place from that perspective. And then there's a lot of extra technology that you're gonna find inside of the 2024 F-150. So there's the option for a head up display. And then there's also the option for Ford's Blue Cruise system. And the Blue Cruise is amazing. I was in one of the new Lincoln Nautilus recently and took that thing for a spin on the highway. And it is literal hands-free driving. So you have to still be paying attention to the road because there are cameras that watch where your eyes are looking, but it is incredible in the sense that it is fully hands-free driving on highways and interstates and things like that. I love it. But that technology is now in the F-150, which is amazing. It's like pretty much every trim level of the F-150 too. Not bad, <laughs> not bad at all. I mean, outside of the camera shaking like crazy right now, <laughs> this is actually pretty good. This is fun. And this isn't even one of the upgraded packages with the, either the FX4, you've got the Tremor off-road pack, and then you still have the Raptor as well. 
So, I mean, the overall suspension that you're going to get inside of this thing is going to depend on the trim level, but there is so much possibility and so much potential inside of this truck. And that was a look at the 2024 Ford F-150 STX. You can find a build link for this F-150 down in the description of the video, along with the contact details for Formula Ford, who were nice enough to lend this thing to me for the afternoon to shoot the video for you guys today. But if you found this video useful, share it with someone if you think they might find it helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until I see you next time, take care. Underneath the hood of the F-150, the 2024 model has pretty much all of the same engine choices that were available last year with very similar power outputs. No, they're the exact same power outputs. <laughs> Underneath the hood of the F-150, the 2024 model has the exact same engine. It doesn't have the exact same engines, dude. Oh my God. Take four. <laughs> and power wise, this thing pushes out 325 horsepower and 300 pound feet of torque. It's 400. Damn.